Hey everyone, today I've got a pretty quick tutorial, it's not particularly complicated, it's on how to set up an internal website so that it can only be accessed on the network itself if you're on the internal network itself. You can't get to it externally unless you set it up so that you can get to it externally, which we're not going to do today, we're just going to do an internal website. Uh, you'll find that most businesses and organisations, especially the larger ones, will have this in place already. And it, when you click on the internet, it just loads the intranet homepage and it, it could have anything from um, links to other external websites, to the news about the business that's going on that day. Uh, pretty much anything that you want to display, you can display on an internal website. So I'm just going to show you how to set that service up. Uh, on a Windows Server 2008 R2 installation. Now again, um, as with my other tutorials, I'm pretty sure that uh, the same concept and the same setup applies if you're using Windows Server 2003 or Windows Server 2012. Um, if it's a little bit different or if it's not the same, send me an email or a message, get in contact with me on my uh, Facebook, Twitter website and I will hopefully try to help you as much as I can if you were into any problems. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do when you um, boot up into Windows Server is click on Start and go to All Programs, Administrative Tools and Server Manager. You can also get to it just from the bottom there. In most cases, by default, it is already uh, pinned to the bottom taskbar. Once you are on this, you need to go to Roles and then you go to Add Roles and the first page that comes up, just press Next and then it will tell you to choose the roles that you want to install. So in my case, I want a web server. Windows take on a web server is called IIS and so you just tick that box and then just press next to carry on there's a few things that it'll tell you to note of an introduction just at the top feel free to read it it's a little bit explanatory quite cool to read and there's some additional information as well if you want to go ahead and uh, give yourself a bit more information because like I said this is just a basic setup there's a lot more to it once it's and once it's been installed which you can go into yourself and start to have a look around and start to sort of pry into it and pull it apart a little bit more so just press next on this screen and it'll ask you various options depending on what you want to do with your web server now if you're just going to do a simple intranet say maybe HTML or a PHP page um, you can pretty much leave everything the way it is these other options again are for things like application development and you know other various more complicated tasks which I'm not really going to go into today because we're not going to do any application development or anything like that. Uh, something I do like to do from personal preference is turn a few more logging tools on just so we can sort of see what's going on if anything goes wrong. Uh, so logging tools I just turn on as well and possibly tracing. If you want a bigger description on any of these options you can just hover over one and click it and it'll give you the description at the side and that might help you out a little bit more but for the most part you can actually leave it as its default and it will all continue to work for a simple intranet setup so from here just press next again it'll give you the uh, outline of everything you've just chosen and what you're about to install so just check that that's all correct and then just press install and the installation process should only take two or three minutes so I'll come back to the tutorial once this is complete. Okay so once the installation is finished after a few minutes you should get a nice green tick along the top just to say that everything is completed successfully. You can press the close button and you can see the role hopefully will be listed somewhere. There it is just at the bottom. If I scroll up very slightly you can see that it is the server role. There you go, all service 17 installed, and there's just the services based under that role, so you can see the actual role is web server IIS. So, by default, just to check this is all, all works correctly, if you go onto the internet, you can actually type in the server's IP address if you know it, which I think I do. 
No, actually, I don't. I think it's dot ten. Nope. If you're unsure about what your server's IP address is, you can do start, go to run, type in um, cmd, and then type in ip config space slash all. And that should give you your server's IP address somewhere. There you go, 192.168.0.11 is my IP address just there. So, if I type this in, 192.168.0.11, press enter, there you go, it's coming up IIS7, which is the default uh, web page for a new installation of IIS web server. So we can see that that's all working correctly. Okay guys, so what we're going to do from here basically is set up a new website. So as you can see, like I said before, this is the, uh, the default page that shows. And we're just going to change this now. So I'm going to close the internet. And I'm going to go to Start All Programs, Administrative, Administrative Tools, and Internet Information Services. And from here you can see the, the computer name listed. So just press the plus icon. And then you can see sites because you can add more than one site technically if you wanted to. So press the plus on the site section and then you will see um, the default website listed which is the one we've just looked at. By default, the default website files are listed in start computer on your local C drive and in inet pub and in www root. So this is the default website that you've just been seeing. Now if you wanted to, you can just delete what's in here and overwrite with your um, web content, but in my case, I'm just going to I'm just going to make a new one from scratch and show you how that will be done. So, default web pack, web website. I'm going to right click. I'm going to do manage website, and I'm going to stop it. I'm then going to right click and remove. You sure you want to delete the selected site? Yes. Now the reason I'm not keeping it is because by default that site is bound to port 80. Now, port 80 is the default HTTP port, which means if I was to make a new website using that port, both of them would conflict and then you'd end up having issues. So just if you're making a new one from scratch, like I am, delete the default site. So now in site, right click sites, press add website. The site name is more for your reference only, so it doesn't really matter what you call this. I'm going to call it intranet because that's essentially what it's going to be. The physical path is the location of the files which of where the files are that make up your intranet or your website not necessarily your internet but just your website so I already have some files listed in computer C intranet and that in here you can just see there's some HTML files some CSS and some images uh, which is what I'm going to I'm going to use that folder basically to make up my website so I'm gonna to have to choose in the physical path I'm gonna to have to uh, browse to that location so it's on the C drive and it's intranet so press OK and you can see it's put it in there if you're using a network location for this that's fine but just make sure that the permissions are set up so that nobody no you know no random person can just go in and start editing your intranet files and put in all sorts of crap that you don't want on it so make sure that you've set up your permissions correctly so that only you can edit the actual intranet if it's not on the server itself if you like I said if you're doing it to a um, to a network another network location uh, the binding you don't really have to mess around with like I said leave it at HTTP and leave it at port 80 that way you don't you don't really have to mess around with anything there because like I said that's the default port the host name you can start messing around with if you have uh, DNS servers installed um, and you have domain names but again for the time being I'm going to leave that blank you don't need to use it start website immediately I'm going to leave tick and I'm going to press OK and you can see now it's listed intranet underneath the site section because I've already chosen the directory and because there's already content in the directory that I was on about before in here intranet because the index page and everything's already existing I can now hopefully just go to Internet Explorer type in the IP address press enter and you can see there it's come up straight away no issues at all um, and again you can edit it however you want you can include whatever you want this is just a, an example of what you could use 
Uh, also, if you are using an index.php, whereas my index page is index.html, it knows what that is and it automatically sets that as the home page. If you use index.php or another file extension as your index page, it won't know how to handle that and you'll just get an error message saying it's forbidden, basically. Uh, so in order to combat that, you need to go to your IIS manager, go to your site, click on your site, and then on the default document, you need to add your index page in here, whatever it's called, with its extension. So at the moment you can see there's no PHP listed, so if you were trying to use index.php, it wouldn't know what to do and it would just forbid you from viewing everything in the directory because that's the way it works. So I'm just going to press add and if I was to do index.php now if you included an index.php file it should allow you in without any issue and it should set the index.php file as the home page by default. Also just to show you that this does work on a client computer I'm just going to go in um, on a client machine that is also connected to the same network just to show you that it does fully function as it should. So all I'm going to do is pop in here 192.168.1 uh, sorry dot zero excuse that dot zero dot eleven and you can see there it's showing up perfectly no problems at all. Uh, something else you can do if you know your server name which in my case if I go to the server manager and I click on server manager you can see the computer name is domain controller without uh, domain controller dot contoso dot com so if I go back to the client and type in domain controller You can see that also loads no problem. So what you could do with now all the computers on your network is set the home page to either domain controller, your server name, or the server's IP address. Apply that. So now whenever anybody opens the internet, you can see it automatically shows up the, uh, the internet page, which is exactly what we wanted. So that's pretty much how to set up the basics of IIS um, web server on Windows Server 2008 R2. If you have any questions, comments, issues, problems or uh, ideas for future videos I should make, just let me know. Uh, you can contact me on Twitter, it's, twi it's at David Ashcroft Co. I'm on Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash David Ashcroft Co. UK. Or you can visit my website www.davidashcraft.co.uk And if you like the videos that you see, if you'd like to subscribe that would be awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been a pleasure making this video for you all today and I really hope you learned something and enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.